five. All right, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come here and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room. To the, to the, well, ain't no darn saints in the room right now. We empty up here right now. But peace to, uh, peace to the folks walking in, watching in on the camera, the ones that couldn't make it, and the saints all the way around the world that we don't even know about right now. Peace to them. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. You know what I'm saying? Quick announcements. Uh, every Sabbath we do uh, the fellowship call, uh, the fellowship hour. I mean, we're going to just call it the fellowship call now. But the, the fellowship call, uh, we jump on the phone. Stay as long as you want. Uh, but we we try to deep dive into, into questions and uh just kind of talk openly and candidly, get to one know, get to know one another. Uh, the sister said that they're going to help me remember to start recording some of these calls. I don't have any intentions on broadcasting any of the calls unless we go over something that's very specific that we all agree is a pretty good idea that we should broadcast. Uh, outside of that, we'll keep it private. Um, we are in, what are we, the ninth month right now? We in the ninth month, um, the ninth Hebrew month. Uh, wrapping up, you know, almost wrapping up the year. Um, and then, you know, we're going to all go all the way to the 12th month, of course. And then uh, we'll start to we'll start the year new um, sometime in what, what these people reckon as March. Um, what else we got? Uh, oh, and then the band, the band app. So, yeah, we have a we have an application. Uh, if you want to join, reach out to me. You can join and. We ain't all that active in there, but every now and again, there's something to come up. Sister Pamela, the most consistent, you know what I'm saying? Sister Pamela always lighting us up on a Wednesday, giving us something to think about. We appreciate her uh, and bless her heart for it. Um, but I think that's all I got. Any other announcements, Steve? Any prayer requests? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get you. You know, the Christian hit you, hit you like with a prayer request. We should do prayer requests, though, because that's a real thing. You know what I'm saying? And Christian don't get everything wrong now. Ain't nothing wrong with a little prayer request. Uh, last week, last week we talked about the King Josiah. He started off that he is about eight years old. He hit the ground running. You know what I'm saying? He had, he had, he had it in his heart to do right by the most high God. Didn't necessarily have the information still based off of what he heard from tradition, what he heard from his fathers. He, uh, he, uh, he, he, he pulled things back, tore down the idols. Remember his father was Manasseh, the father before him. Uh, no, I'm sorry. His father was Ammon. Um, and the father before him was Manasseh and then before that was Hezekiah. Uh, so, um, Manasseh and Hezekiah both, uh, before they died, right. Was trying to clean up the land. So they ended up tearing down the high places and the altars and things like that. So Josiah followed in his footstep. He even burned the priests, the bones of the priests, right. So it was already dead priests. He dug them up, put their bones on the altars and he burned them because they didn't do right by the most high God. And it was according to the prophecy of uh, Jer uh, that was given to uh, Jeroboam from the man of God um, way, way, way back hundreds of years before uh, he called him out by names. And it was going to be a King Josiah that burned the bones of the priests on this altar. Um, and so we got to see it play out last week. And after that, Josiah, uh, uh, he ended up stumbling on the book of the uh, law. You know what I'm saying? The book of Moses and uh, the, Mo the most High God kind of. Kind of put it on his heart to be, you know, crushed when he heard that book. It, it cut him to the heart. That's what the listen. That's what the word do to you, right? That's what the word do to you. The word. A lot of people look at the word, and then we kind of we kind of think of it as like, like something that's supposed to make us feel good, right? And and I think when we come into it with these types of uh, expectations, that's not correct. If you haven't been primed to kind of look at the word to get the effect that you're supposed to get out of it. Then you know, so it kind of it kind of throws you real quick. Go to uh, 
go to Jeremiah. I ain't as good as I used to. I feel like it's Jeremiah two or one. It might be eight. Try try Jeremiah two. Verse nine. Jeremiah 2, verse 9, maybe. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, says Yahuwah, and with your children, and children will I plead. Children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see, and send unto Kedar, and consider diligently and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my no, people that's not changed. it. Try, uh, try Jeremiah 1, verse 9. What's that? That's 2 or 1? That's 2. That's 2. So, yeah, try Jeremiah 1, verse 9. The Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. The Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set over, set thee over the nations and over kingdoms to root out, pull down. And to this is what I'm look. Watch, watch what you say. You have to understand what the word. You have to set yourself up for the correct expectation of what the word is supposed to do to you. How the word is supposed to make you feel, right? So he says, "I put this word in your mouth to do what now?" See, I have said, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to. Destroy. He said to root out. And to pull down. And to destroy and to throw and, down. And to and to destroy and to throw down. L listen to the order. To root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down. And then what else? To build and to plant. And then to build and to plant. So which of those might feel good? Maybe to build, you know what I'm saying? Building something, maybe that feels good. And maybe to plant, that might feel good. It feels like something positive is happening. You know what I'm saying? When you building something, when you planting something, it feels like you got a vision. You got something that's coming up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like that's something positive happening, right? That's up, that's up building, you know what I'm saying? Like you building something and you planting something, that like, you know what I'm saying? Make you feel good, make you feel hopeful. But before he get to the things that might make you feel hopeful, He's been, he's been, as the rappers would say, he's been four bars talking, telling you about, you know what I'm saying, how he gonna mess your butt up. Read it again. He said to root out. And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. He said, I put my words in, in, your, in your mouth. For what reason? See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. and to Root out? That's like a root canal. You ever had a root canal? You go in there, you nervous before they even touch your darn teeth. You sitting there like, uh, uh, uh. you know what I'm saying? You get that little twitch in the side of your neck right here trying to open your mouth and be scared at the same time. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Then they get that thing rooted. I ain't never had a root canal, but I heard about it. Right? Keep going. And to pull down and to uh -huh. destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Right? You got to be messed up. The word going to touch you and destroy you before it builds you up. That's the expectation you have to have coming into the word. Otherwise, you you it won't feel right when it hits you. How else is it not going to destroy you to for to say that the word not going to destroy you is to say that you was already right before you got there. Right? It got to break down everything you got. Once that happens, then the word starts to rebuild you. It starts to plant in you and you grow. But the way that that thing start, it start to it tear you up. So it should hurt. When you hear the word, it should hurt. You should feel something when you hear the word. If you don't feel something, keep listening. Keep listening because it ain't hit you yet. But you're supposed to feel something. You're supposed to feel something in your heart. It's supposed to hurt you. Oh, uh, grab uh, Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23, I think it's verse uh, 29. This is Jeremiah chapter 23. I think it's verse 29. 
It's the expectation that we got to have. Everything is based on expectation. You ain't even got to believe a book to understand that, right? Even if you don't believe a book, if you want to go and have a solid, you you want to have a, 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 what they call it now, uh, you want to have good mental health, right? The way they, the way they kind of call it now, good mental health. You want your head on straight. All it is, is expectations. Right. You can manipulate yourself. That's what a lot of people try to do. They try to manipulate themselves into expectations. Right. Some people you'll see them. They have low. They negative about everything because they have low expectations and they try to do that internally to protect themselves from disappointment. Right. So they manipulate themselves in the in the in the just saying that everything is going to be horrible. Oh, that ain't even going to go right. Now I know it ain't going to work out for me. Right. They're what they doing is they learn. To manage their expectations with low expectations so that they're not disappointed. Because at some point in their life, they experienced something that made them feel disappointment. And they said to themselves, I never want to feel that again. Right? And so they don't address the real issue. What they do is they just start being negative. Right? Then you got people that manipulate, manip, manipulate themselves in the opposite way. Right? They have high expectations for everything. Right? And they could, but they need the high expectations to motivate them. Like, oh man, I'm gonna be a, a millionaire if all I gotta do is make this decision. I'm telling you, it can happen like this, man. I'm telling you, I can make it. I can make it. And some of them do make it, and some of them don't, right? But they manipulate themselves into thinking, okay, high expectation. Then, know people that manipulate themselves with high expectations, usually because of the disappointment of not getting it, you have to, you have to, in order to keep yourself going, you have to blame something else. It got to be somebody else reason or something, some, something else reason so that you can keep yourself going. Everything got to be paid for mentally. Right. Well, the Bible is no different. Right. It's about expectations. So when you approach the book, you got to be expecting it to affect you in the way that it's, it's said it's going to affect you. Because if you come in with high expectations of the book, but it's not according to the book, it's higher than the expectation that the book gave you. Well, then now you're going to be delusional about what you read. Right? That's oftentimes what Christians are. Oh, God, don't. They, they expectation is way higher than what the Most High God said. They, God don't care what you do. So now every time they read something, that's what they see. They've been looking at this same book that we're looking at. And what they see is God don't care what you do. He loves you no matter what you do. You never read that. But because that's how they've been taught to expect God then that's what they see when they read the book, right? And then you have other brothers that's low, very, very, very low expectation. They say, God don't care about none of this stuff. Only thing God is here for is to do X or to do Y. You know what I'm saying? So you'll see them as the brothers that only believe the law, right? They get to throwing out everything else because their expectations are very low. They don't feel like God is really involved in a lot of this stuff. Right. They just got low, low, low expectation of the book. That's a problem on both sides. Right. Our expectations have to be based off of what the book say. Right now, the book is telling us first thing he's going to do is root out. Right. Then he's going to darn destroy. Right. Then he's going to pull down and throw down. And after he get done with all that, then now I can build. Right. And that's exactly what King Josiah did last week. If you remember, King Josiah came in, he started tearing up the altars and burning stuff down and pulling all that stuff down. Then what happened right after that? Right? Right after that, you know what he said? Let me go build the temple. Let me go rebuild it. So he started tidying up the temple, getting it back together. You know what I'm saying? Giving money to it, all that. So he, he started by tearing everything down that wasn't right. Then he started to rebuild. Watch what uh, Jeremiah chapter uh, 23, verse 29 say. It's not my word like as a fire. Look, he said, it's not my word. Here's what he told Jeremiah to tell us. Is not my word like a fire? What else? Say if Yahuwah and like uh -huh. a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. He said, it's like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. That is what the word is like. Keep going. Watch this. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, saith Yahuwah, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Uh huh. Behold, I am against the prophet, says Yahuwah, that use their tongues and say he said. Against them that I false dreams, says Yahuwah, and do tell them 
and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yes, right? These people lie. are lying to us. It ain't no different from when Jeremiah was talking. These people are lying to us. And the Most High God looks at that as stealing his word. If somebody come up to you and tell you about God and it's not according to the book, the word has now been stolen by that person. If they present themselves as teaching about God and they don't teach you according to the book, the word has been stolen from that person. And people do it in every manner of way, right? Some of them doing it like we'd be talking about. We'd be making fun of the ones that, that act like they're doing miracles. They stealing the word from us, right? Some of them act like they know the law. You know what I'm saying? Some of them act like they, you know what I'm saying? Act like they, they're so well versed in worldly things and all this stuff. Well, the archaeological dig of, of, uh, of 1943 actually dug up to prove that actually Moses was a white man. You know what I'm saying? Like they do all these different weird things to try to try to steal the word from us. But it come in all different shapes, all different sizes. The only thing that's safe for us, there's literally nothing. You might hear a voice in your ear. That's not necessarily safe for us. You might feel a spirit move on you. That's not necessarily safe for us, right? You might hear somebody talk on YouTube. You might hear me talk on YouTube. That's not necessarily stay safe for us. What's safe for us is the word of the most high God. If we stick to it and we cling to it tight, that is what's safe for us. Everything else is compromised. But the truth of the most high God's word is the only thing that's safe for us. Because even if we were to misunderstand it or be led wrong, if we stick to it and believe it and obey it the way that we see it and we understand it, just take it as what it say. Guess what? The most high God will lead you to the truth and he'll give you the understanding. You ain't even go, you, you're not going to have to sit here. And wonder and be back and forth of, man, I don't know if this brother is teaching a God or not. Man, listen, you keep ignore everything. Keep doing what the book say, the way you read it, the way you understand it. You keep doing it one way or another. Eventually, your understanding going to become clear. That's all we're here to do is get the word that's safe for us. Let's go. Let's pick up where we left off last week. Where we leave off. What was it? Second Chronicles chapter what? 34? 35? Is, we should be on 35 now, right? We are on 35. It's Second Chronicles chapter 35. Give me verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 35, verse 1. The word is like a hammer, man, that break. Listen, it break a, a rock in pieces. It's like a fire that burn. You can't have the expectation that the word going to touch you and make you feel good. Massage you. You know what I'm saying? Tuck you in at night. That's not what the word is for. You can't send me a message or call me and just say, hey, brother, you know, I lost, you know, I lost somebody in my life. I just need you to just give me a word that will help me through this. That's difficult for me. It's a lot of pressure because I feel bad. I feel bad that you lost somebody in your life. I feel bad that you sad and you feeling sorrow. I do. But that's, that's a difficult question when y'all call me and ask me for that stuff. Because guess what? Book ain't made for that. Book wasn't made to be your, your personal comfort. To be your, your, you know what I'm saying? Your, uh, what the little kid, what they call them when the little kid's attached to the, uh, to the blanket or whatever? Security blanket. You know what I'm saying? That's not, you know what I'm saying? That's not what the book is for. The book, the book is to educate you and to educate you. It got to tear down all the lies you believe. And we believe a lot of lies. We believe a lot of lies. I mean, it's, it's rampant. It, and it's not just, listen, be careful. I have to be careful when I say that it's not y'all fault. At the end of the day, it's not y'all fault because somebody taught y'all this way, right? All these lies that I used to believe, somebody taught me those lies. So it don't really be our fault, but we going to be accountable for it. If we don't correct it and we don't get it right, even though it's not our fault, we going to be accountable for this mess. Brother D, how you doing? Hey, it's our, right? But we got to be accountable for this stuff. So I want us to be able to get this stuff in us and let it be rooted out. 
destroy, pull down and throw down. Because at that point, now you got a clear cam. You got a blank canvas that you can build with. Most high God can do something with that. He can't do nothing with, you know what I'm saying? He can't do nothing you already fool. Oh, we got grab uh, John chapter nine. Give me John chapter nine. Give me. Uh, what's the last verse? Like 40 something, 42. Give me like John chapter nine, maybe 41. It's John chapter nine, maybe 41. Do it go down that far? 41 is the last verse. That's the last verse. Then yeah. give me uh, if 41 is the last verse, give me about 30. Give me like 37. This is John chapter 9, verse 37. We'll start at 35. 35? Yeah. This is John chapter 9, verse 35. Watch what the book say. Y'all sure heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto them, He said unto him, Dost thou believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Yahushua said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talks with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. Y'all gotta understand. Listen, I can't wait till we get to the gospel. Because y'all go, y'all gonna understand who Yahushua was. It's not, man, y'all again, going back to expectation. If you got this expectation that Yahushua is this, you know what I'm saying, half white, half Mexican man with long, like his hair pressed. You know what I'm saying? You see, when they put him on TV. His hair, darn, his hair straight out the flat iron. You know what I'm saying? That boy hair press. You know what I'm saying? That boy got a, what they call it? A uh, a silk press. You know what I'm saying? That boy come out, you know what I'm saying? Just like this. Shoulders all slumped. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why you look so weak? You know what I'm saying? Why you look so effeminate? You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with these people? These people are sick making y'all sure look like this. Listen, they put Jesus on there. That boy, you know what I'm saying? Got the silk press on. He always walking slow like he don't drink enough. You know what I'm saying? Like he ain't. Like, he ain't drank no water, had no food, you know what I'm saying? That boy just deficient. She's like, I come to you in peace. You know, that's how you make him see. So your expectation is off when you see him. You think he like this soft, you know what I'm saying, cute, cuddly, you know what I'm saying, white boy. And it's like, but no, nah, that's not quite the man that we talking about. No, this was a smart mouth, irritating, annoying, super religious, and make everything about God. Like, I'm just talking about grabbing you a sandwich. And you sitting there, I get my bread from heaven. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of guy he was. Like, man, listen, I'm just, can I run the subway for you real quick? I'm trying to get you a sandwich. Any man that goes to subway is not worthy of the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Like, God darn tamale. I just want, we're hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? But in his mind, it's focus. That's all he requires. Focus. Like y'all thinking about everything. Y'all don't know that y'all don't have a whole lot of time with me. All I want you to do is focus. I want you to understand the stuff I'm trying to tell you. So that's how Yahushua was. Right? So just watch how you got to look at Yahushua from that perspective. Read it again. Watch how he talking to him. Yahushua heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Right. So look, y'all sure come. I mean, people would call him pompous. If like today, you got to understand, man, walked up to him. He looking like, all right. So do you believe on the son of God? Looking at him, no. You know what I'm saying? He's looking at him. Looking at him in the face. I like that, man. He's swinging his arm just like that. So do you believe in the son of God? You know what I'm saying? Then the man look at him like, who is the son of God? Like, who you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Watch what y'all sure say. I love him, man. This thing is a said. bad boy. Yahshua said unto him, thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talked with thee. Look, he didn't just say, I'm the son of God. No, because that's too boring. You know what I'm saying? That's too boring. I can't just tell you, I'm the son of God. He said, not only have you seen him, but you talking to him. You know what I'm saying? That's a bad boy. Not only, I, I didn't say, no, forget. He could have simply said, I'm the son, I'm, I'm, it's me. I'm the son of God. That's what they, Jesus, would say. They Jesus would have been like, no, please believe me. I'm the son of God. Like a weakling. Now y'all sure. Y'all sure like not only, not only, not only did you see him, but you talking to him, boy. Pompous. You know what I'm saying? Pompous. 
but he the only one that got the right to be pompous. You understand it? He the only one that got the right to exalt himself, and he still don't do it while he in the flesh. Watch him. Keep going. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Yahushua said, for judgment I am I come into this world that they which are not, that they would see not might see. And he said, I've see. come to this world for judgment that they that see not might what? Might see. So the ones that don't understand, the ones that don't get it, the ones that don't see, the ones that struggling like, man, I don't know what these boys is preaching, but all of them is preaching something different. I can't tell what the truth is, but listen, I'm just searching. I'm trying to figure it out. I see what the words say. I'm just going to do what I think the words say until somebody come along and make it clear for me. Those people are the ones that do not see. They admit it. They know it. They tell themselves. I really don't understand what I'm talking about. I really don't understand what I'm doing. I really don't understand what this book is saying, but I'm just trying my darn best. Right? Those are the ones that do not see. And guess what? Who did he come for? I came with the judgment and come to this world that they which see not might see. And what else? And they that which see might be made blind. Right? Then the ones that's in there, I know I got the book down. I know I understand it. I know I'm right. I know I did. That's a dangerous game. Because if you not right and you think you see, the man going to make you blind. Right? So watch this. Some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words. And he said unto him, are we blind also? Right? Pharisees heard him talking. They looking like, oh, he's taking shots. Because he is taking uh, shots. Listen, the uh, Pharisee... Y'all be reading these Pharisees and just make them out to be evil, right? But in their mind, they wasn't evil. In their mind, they were good people, right? What they was looking at is, he over there taking shots. He throwing, he throwing, what they call it, he throwing subs. What they call it, he's subbing us. So they called him out because the Pharisee wasn't soft either. They looking at it, they called him out. Like, okay, yeah, okay, so we can't, we blind too, huh? We blind? Well, we Pharisees. What you mean we blind? What you mean we run this whole thing? All we do is get up and study this law. How you going to talk to us like we crazy? That's how they looking at it. We Pharisees. Oh, so are oh, you calling us blind? Man, it's kook over there. I don't know what's wrong with it. That's how they look at them. Right? Then watch what y'all should say. This is one of the ones, uh, like you said, some of the ones resonate with you. This one, this one was uh, always one of the ones that stood out the most to me. Yeah, buddy. It's a good one, too. And y'all should have said unto them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say you see. Now you say we see. Therefore, your sin remain. When you wrong and you got it settled in your, your mind that you right, that is a dangerous place to be. When you wrong and you don't leave no room to be corrected, that is a dangerous place. Because at that point, you're saying you see. And when you say you see and you wrong, the, the most high God going to make you blind. He, he told you, since you say you see, your sin remains. Right? He said, had you been blind, hey, look, oh, we blind too? Nah, because had y'all been blind, y'all be all right. But no, nah, y'all say y'all see, right? Okay, cool. Y'all sin remains. He didn't explain nothing to him. He didn't try to break it down. He didn't try to show him where the error in their ways was. Listen, Y'all dealing with somebody who's very different from anything that y'all ever experienced in y'all life. Y'all have to put this stuff in perspective. Right? That's not his job. His job wasn't to sit here and try to explain and break stuff down. That he, that wasn't it. He, didn't, he didn't get put here for that. That's our job. Right? You know how people always say, the Bible says, be like Christ. It do. And it do say that. Right? It do say be like the Messiah. Right? It do say that. But you got to understand what it's talking about when they say that. Don't get out there and try to tear, but try to be pompous like him. They, he said, look, Yahushua walked up his door and said, have you, have you not believed on the Son of Man, on the Son of God? Not only, not only have you heard him, but you're talking to him. You think one of us can say that? Okay. So when he said, when, when the book say be like, it don't mean mimic everything that he do now. That's not what it's trying to tell you to do because you don't have the position. That's why he told James, we don't have to get it, but that's why he told James and John, the, the sons of uh, Zebedee. What was it, Zebedee? 
Yeah, I think it's Sons of Zebedee. He said, yes. he, that's why he told James and John, he told them. He said, y'all, he is like, listen, I know y'all want to sit next to me. I know you want to sit on my right hand. But are you going to be baptized with the baptism that I'm about to be baptized with? They looking like, well, yeah. He like, well, no, nah, you're going to get baptized, but not quite the one that I'm. Like, you're not doing the stuff that I'm about to do. Therefore, you don't have the authority that I'm about to have. So when they say be like my, Yahushua, when they say be like the Messiah, it's not talking about mimic his every move. It's talking about have the perspective and the focus that he has. Obey the father the way that he obeyed the father. The commandment that the father got for him is not the can't same commandment. Obey the commands that he gave you. People like to make a mess of this darn word. Got our people darn confused. Stuff that should be simple. Stuff that should be easy. Our people get confused because there's so many lies out there. Oh, talking to a brother on the online. I mean, we ain't, ain't got to go into what we were talking about, but we were talking online. And I'm just sitting here. I'm like, man, that thing is not fair. You playing against something that's not fair. Everything against you. You can't find the truth. You can't. You look, you search, you can't find the truth. Not no pure, unadulterated truth. Everybody got, a, a got, got lies mixed in with it. Everybody. And a man of God try to bring you the pure, unadulterated truth. I tell you, I don't know when I don't know. I tell you when it's there, I show it to you in a book. But because you've been looking at the same book that I've been looking at, and somebody been lying to you about what it means, man, I think you can't see it. Right? I'm going back and forth. Bro, I'm like, listen, this, that, and it's a cool brother. It's a cool, it's like, it, it ain't it contentious, you know what I'm saying? It's more like the, the same type of discussion that we be having. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a cool brother. But my man is like, man, I, I can't, I just can't see it. I'm looking like, I feel you, man. I understand. We gonna keep doing this, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, we gonna keep doing, we not stopping. We gonna keep doing it. Because you wanna know. He not, he not somebody who's saying, I see. He's saying, I don't see. He telling me, man, look, I want to see. I don't, I, I just don't, I just don't, I don't see it the way you see it. Talking about the Edomites. You know what I'm saying? Talking about the Edomites. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, he's like I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it the way you see it because of X, Y, Z. He arguing, but it's like, it ain't like on no, you know what I'm saying? He just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like, it's all right, brother. You know what I'm saying? We can keep doing this. You know what I'm saying? But it's way bigger topics that we can go over. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's that's frustrating to me. It's only because of the lies that he can't see it, though. You know what I'm saying? He didn't looked at all these verses and somebody didn't taught him and taught him to interpret them all types of weird ways. So it's like you got to spend so much time breaking that stuff down. Like that can't be true because of this. That can't be true because of that. And this it. But that's our life. That's what we hear. That's what the Most High God put us here for. That's our job, right? It's to give sound teaching. That's not what y'all sure job was. He talking to the Pharisees. That boy, like you know what I'm saying. All right, you know what I'm saying. Since you say you see, you know what I'm saying. Your sin remain, boy. I ain't about to sit here and try to break this stuff down to you. That's not his job. You already think you see. Let's go to uh, uh, where we at? Let's go to uh, Second Chronicles chapter thirty-five. Moreover, Josiah kept the Passover unto Yahuwah in Jerusalem. They killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month, and he said in their charges and encouraged them to the service of the house of the Lord mm -hmm. and said unto the Levites that, that taught Israel which were holy unto you but thy ark in the house which Solomon the son of David king of Israel built it shall not be a burden upon your shoulders who your God and his people Israel and prepare yourselves by the houses of your fathers after your courses according to the writing of David king of Israel according to the writing of Solomon, his son, and stand in the holy place according to the divisions of the families of the fathers of your brethren, the people. And go, uh, go back for me real quick. He said, according to the what? And prepare yourselves by the houses of your father, the courses, according to the writing of King David, king of Israel, and according to the writing of Solomon, his son. Uh-huh. And stand in the holy place according to the divisions of the families of the fathers of your brethren, the people. And after the... Nowadays, David, listen. Nowadays, we'll say... According to the Book of Kings, or according to uh, uh, 
the Psalms or according to a whole bunch of stuff, right? That's how we kind of look at it nowadays. That's not how that when we talk about reconnecting with our people, that's not how we refer to things. Right? That's not how we refer to things. You got to understand that like 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 David for us was like like he was everything for us. You understand? Like David for us was like, I'm trying to think, like, who would David like? Who was who would David be like? David for us is like how the Christians see like Paul or Peter. Right? Keep going. Moses was like Jesus Christ. How the Christians see Jesus Christ? Moses was like him. You understand? Watch, here's your watch. Keep reading. Watch this. And stand in the holy place according to the division of the families of the fathers of the people, the family of the Levites. So the Passover and sanctify us, prepare that they may according to the word of the Yahuwah by the hand of Moses. And Josiah gave to the people of the flock land for all the Passover offering. All, all right, so Josiah present. gave he he ended up giving them uh King o Josiah he ended up giving them the the uh animals for, for the sacrifice of the Passover because he wanted everybody to participate, right? We, we at this point we kind of fallen away from our culture, or not necessarily from our culture, but fallen away from from uh, practicing the law, right? And practicing our 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 uh, our appointed times. So what he wanted to do is he wanted to restore. You have to understand, like, what he did, the first thing he did, he cleaned everything up by breaking stuff down. Remember, we always talk about when you clean something, to clean something, you got to kill. You got to kill what's bad. That's why when you, you know what I'm saying, you clean your hands, you do it with soap, they say it killed 99% germs. Right? So that's the point of cleaning. Whenever you're cleaning something, something got to go. Something got to be destroyed. Something got to be pulled back. Something got to be messed up. Right? So that's what we doing. We he, we was cleaning it up, and then King Josiah, after cleaning it up, now he's trying to restructure things. So he's telling the priest, he's like, "Yo, set yourself back up. Set yourself back up. Do it according to the the writings of uh, King David. I mean, uh, King Solomon, the son of King David, right? Because remember, Solomon he set in order how how the uh, how the priest should go in the courses. David and Solomon did it in the courses, right? Keep going." For all that were present to the number of thousand and three thousand bullocks, these were of the king's substance. And his princes gave willingly unto the people, to the pre Levites, Hilkiah and Zariah and Jehiel, rulers of the house of God, gave unto the priests for the Passover offerings 2,600 small cattle and 300 oxen. Onaniah, and Shemaiah and Nathaniel, his brethren, and Hashbiah and Eiel and Josabad, Josabad, chief of the Levites, gave unto the Levites for Passover offerings five thousand small cattle, five hundred oxen. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their courses according to the king's commandment. And they killed the Passover, and the priests sprinkled the blood from the hands, and Levites flayed them. And they removed the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people to offer unto Yahuwah as it is written in the book of Moses. And so did they with the oxen. And they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance. But the other holy offerings saw they in pots and in calderons and in pans and divided them speedily among all the people. And afterward, mm -hmm. they made ready for themselves and for the priests because the priests and the priests the sons of Aaron were bruised in offering of burnt offerings and the fat until night. Therefore, the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron and the singers of the sons of Asaph were in their place, according to the commandment of David and Asaph and Heman and Jejuthun, the king's seer and the porters waited at every gate. They might not depart from their service for their brother and the Levites prepared for them. So all the mm -hmm. service of Yahuwah was prepared the same day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of Yahuwah according to the commandment of King Josiah. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, seven days. There was no Passover like that 
there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept. And the priests and the Levites and all the Judah and uh, and Israel that were present at the inhabitants of Jerusalem. All right. So in other words, what it's telling you is this Passover that Jer uh, that Josiah threw. It was as the kids say lit. Keep going. In the 18th year, of the reign of Josiah was the Passover kept. After this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Nico, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish by the Euphrates. And Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house of wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste, forbear from meddling with God who is with me, that he destroy thee not. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguise himself that he might fight him. And hearken not unto the words of Nico from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archer shot at King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Have me away, for I am wounded. The servants took him out of that out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died, and was buried in one of of his fathers and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Jeremiah lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and women spake of Josiah in their lamentations to this day, and made them an ordinance in Israel. And behold, they are written in the lamentations. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness, according to that which was written in the law of the Lord, all in his deeds, first and last, oh, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. All right. So now let's go to Nahum. The book of Nahum, the prophet. Right. We looked at Josiah and Josiah. He ended up setting off the biggest Passover that our people had ever seen at that time. Right. He just wanted to restore and get things rebuilt. After that, he was sitting on top of the world. He's good. Everything is fine. And then the king of Egypt comes. He didn't come up against him, but he came too close to our territory. So I said, I'm not having that. I'm going up against him. Right. Why might he think that way? Who else came playing around in our territory and ended up turning on us? The king of Assyria. Right. The king of Assyria. King of Assyria came playing around. Right. Remember, then after that, Babylon came, you know, and said, hey, Hezekiah, how you doing? I like what you got in here. Came a little bit uh, later and got his son, didn't he? Then got Ammon. So Josiah is coming from this. So you had King Nico come around. He playing around like, no, nah, man, I'm not trying to get you. I'm trying to get these other boys. Josiah looking like, yeah, I hear you. But uh, nah. Jo King Nico told him, what I'm telling you is from the mouth of God. King Nico is telling him from the mouth of God. And the book confirmed it. It said he didn't listen to what King Nico said that God told him to say. Right? So that was something that, that was, it actually came from God. Josiah wasn't listening. Josiah went out to fight. He disguised himself, the book say. Disguise, who, who else disguised himself to fight? King Saul. Um, uh, Jehoshaphat. All right. Uh, not Jehoshaphat, but uh, uh, Ahab. 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 All right. Remember, Ahab went out there. Almost died the exact same way. Ahab went out there trying to fight. You know what I'm saying? Fighting a battle he wasn't supposed to be fighting. You know what I'm saying? Most I God already told him not to do it, but he did it at the mouth of prophets, right? Ahab went out there, got shot with an arrow. This time, it wasn't at the mouth of what we would consider a prophet. It was at the mouth of a king. You know what I'm saying? And at that point, Most I God was, yeah, no, that's my word. You know what I'm saying? So I like to believe that Josiah knew that was God's word. But Josiah still went ahead. You know what I'm saying? Most I God had an arrow shot. You know what I'm saying? He disguised himself. They don't even know who they're shooting. They hit the boy, boom, he like, man, take me home. I'm wounded. And he ended up dying. All right? So we're going to go to the prophet Nahum. All right? Now, Nahum is, is a prophet. A lot of the prophets that we've been reading about, they're prophets to Israel or prophets to Judah. All right? Nahum is different. He's like Jonah. Right? Jonah wasn't. Jonah was from Israel. But his prophecy that we read about wasn't to Israel, although he did have a prophecy in the book of Kings. That was to Israel, right? But the prophecy that we read about it wasn't to Israel. The prophecy that we read about is to um, Nineveh. 
to the Assyrians, right? <laughs> so Nahum is very similar, right? Let's read Nahum and see who he's talking to. It's Nahum chapter chapter one, verse one. The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum. The, the right. Elkoshite. So now the first prophet that went to Nineveh was Jonah. Right now, this is the next prophet, his name Nahum, who also was sent to Nineveh. Now, you have to try to put yourself in mind of what Jonah said about Nineveh. And now let's read what Nahum is saying about Nineveh. God is jealous and the Lord revenges the Lord revenge. And the Lord revenges the Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserves wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebu rebukes the sea and makes it dry and dries up all the rivers. Bishan languishes and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languishes. The mountains quake at him and the hills melt and the earth is burnt at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwells therein. Who can stand before his indignation and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury, to, his fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down. Like the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows them that trust in him. But with an he said what now? Flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof and darkness shall pursue his enemies. Go back for me. He said he does. He knows what about those who trust him. Read that again for me. He knoweth them that trust in him. All right. That's important. That's important. We can't trust. Listen, we can't stress ourselves out trying to figure out who believe God and who don't. You got to get over that. Right. It's a natural thing to do, but you we got to be better than natural. We can't stress ourselves out. Be like, no, that's a real man of God. Or no, I don't know if that brother is. A don't don't even get into that. All you need to do. It's judged based off of what you see and what the books say. That's it. And don't judge nothing that ain't, ain't appropriate for you to judge. Right? It's not appropriate for you to judge who's a man of God and who's not. It's only appropriate for you to judge us. I've seen him act, act with obedience or I've seen them act in sin. That's it. That's appropriate for you to judge. We don't know what they're going to wake up and do tomorrow. We don't know what they did yesterday. We don't know they, what they did, what they're doing right now if they ain't in front of us. Right. That's not um, that's all we got to know is the most high God knows who trusts in him. That's it. He know it. The rest of this stuff. All we got is a job to do. All we got to do is fulfill the job that we got to do. Oh, we got grab uh grab Titus. This is Titus chapter two, verse what, 19. Uh, or 11. Yeah. Give me chap Titus chapter 2, verse 11. That's the last verse? Uh, this is uh, Titus verse uh, chapter 2, verse 11. I think that's what I want to read. It's Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Uh, yep, one second. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, <laughs> teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, no, and godly in want. this present world. It's not what I want. Um, You want... Uh, you want uh, Timothy 2.19? Yeah, try to give me Timothy chapter 2.19. Is it 1 Timothy? I think it's 1 Timothy 2.19. All right, give me 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. What did I just say? Titus 2.11? Yeah. Okay, so 1 Timothy chapter 2.19. If that ain't it, then let's try 2 Timothy chapter 2.19. No, I think first Timothy. I think it's second Timothy two nineteen. 
Okay, let's try 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Yeah, it definitely ain't 1 Timothy chapter 2, right? Because that's that's when women can't preach, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2 Timothy 2, 19. That's what you're doing. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this. Seal. Listen, the foundation. What's a foundation? The beginning. That's the beginning. That's the that's on that's that's based off of where everything is built on. So he's telling you everything is built on this fact. Watch this. Are these facts? Watch this. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. Yahuwah knows those that are His. He already knows, like he knows. This is not a guessing game for him. Who is it a guessing game for? Us. It's for us. We the ones that got to figure out if we belong to him or not. It's not him. He already know how it's going to play out. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all a show I've been watching. Oh, I like it too. I like it a lot. You know what I'm saying? Loki season two. You know what I'm talking about? Listen, I watch that thing. Oh, I like that thing a lot. But Loki in the show, he learned how to control time. Come on, man. Right? Don't need you spoiling so, nothing. Huh? Don't need you spoiling nothing. Oh, uh, it's too late now. You know what I'm saying? So oh. he going back and forth and back and forth until he knows everywhere. You ever seen uh you ever seen the other Marvel movie? I won't spoil this one. Doctor Strange. So when it was Avengers, you know what I'm saying? They was fighting, they getting they butt whooped. You know what I'm saying? But Dr. Strange was looking like, okay, let me try to figure this thing out. So he went and his head doing all this because he, he going through time and playing it out in every single scenario that he could. Right. And after he got done playing it out, he could see every way he's tried it every way. And he's looking like this is the only way that it's going to work. Right. So that's what you got to imagine with the most high God. Not that he has to play it out. But he knows already the only way that it's going to work. All this stuff. So you will see whether you watch Loki season two or whether you watch the Avenger. They looking at look, they was looking at Doctor Strange and they looking like, are you sure? Because folks is dying right now. People get knocked off. Are you sure you want me to go about it this way? Trust me. You know what I'm saying? Let them have it. Trust me. This is the only way it works. It don't feel right. But he already knew because he looked at it every single way. He knew how that thing was going to play out. He knew that somebody going to later on make a mistake. They're going to come back, chop the man's head off, and it's going to be good. What they chop off, his head or his arm? His head. Yeah, chopped his head off. You know, they chopped his arm too, though, right? Or his hand? Didn't no. they chop off his hand? Nope. They didn't chop off his hand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he had the gauntlet. I think they chopped off his hand, right? No? They chopped off his hand. They just took it from him. They just took it off his hand? He didn't have it to begin he with. He pulled it? He didn't have it. Oh, yeah, they had to make their own glass, That's right, because he didn't have it no more. That's right. But, yeah, so they chop off his head. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Strange had saw all that. Remember, Dr. Strange disappeared, didn't he? Yeah, he died. Yeah. So it's like he saw how all that was going to play out. He knew that about himself, but he was looking like, because I understand how it's going to play out, this is how it got to be. I know what's about to happen, right? That's how you got to see it with God. He already knows how it's going to happen. He already knows how it's going to play out. He already knows the only way that all this works. So all this thing through the book, the only thing he doing is trying to guide us and let us know like, yo, 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 trust me. This is what you should do. If you want it to work out for you, this is how you should play. This is how you should move. It's just our silly bus that don't know. So it comes down to, do I trust him and what he say, even though it feels wrong? Even though it, it feels like mm, I might die doing that. Do I trust him and what he say? Because Dr. Strange died, but guess what happened? He got resurrected. He came back. Right? What's well, a similar thing for us? You saw how all, all the dust, when they, you know what I'm saying, man, snap the thing, they all start turning to dust. What you think gonna come back together for us? It's bones thousands of years ago that were buried. You think they still there? Things is dust, boy. How you think he gonna pull all these bones back together? 
Just like that. You know what I'm saying? They, when Iron Man snapped his finger, and then all them people start coming back from the dust, these people act like, you know what I'm saying? Listen, they can't, listen, all these movies that got a good plot, they be basing it off our book. It makes me mad. They be basing it off our book. I don't feel like it's fair, personally. You know what I'm saying? Like, just let me, somebody, look, somebody cut me a budget. Give me somebody who can, give me a screenwriter, somebody who know what they're doing. We can make some money and we can save some people at the same time. I know y'all don't care about the saving people. I care about the saving people. Y'all care about the money. I still want some money, though. I care about money, too. You know what I mean? You got to give me a little cut now. I ain't going to ask for all of it. Just give me a little cut. We can make a good movie, though. But all these, all these movies, The Matrix, Darn, uh, Luke Skywalker, all these things is based off of our book. They take the plot from our book. And it turned out to be a great movie. It's only the Christians that make these silly darn movies that's supposed to be based off of the book. That thing is all wrong. It's like, what's wrong with y'all? How y'all let the, how y'all let the darn, the, you got the whole thing, you got the whole script right in front of you, and then you mess it up. You gonna make, uh, Sister Pamela reminded me what, uh, Brother Arya said. You know what I'm saying? You gonna make, you know what I'm saying, what you call him, a surfer dude? Brother Arya said something different. It was funny with you. I forgot what he said. But yeah, you gonna make surfer, surfer Yahushua. Surfer Jesus. Trying to make a movie out of that. I'm like, man, I don't know what's wrong with these people. Just cut me the budget. I, I ain't even gonna touch Yahushua. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff I can get to before I touch Yahushua. I'll make, listen, Cain and Abel, I entertain y'all, but I guarantee it. I, listen, let me make a movie on Cain and Abel. I guarantee y'all never see it the same. And it'll be exactly what's in the book. It's like all this stuff is action packed, heavy story, heavy art to it. It's like all you got to do is write the story the way it is. These people don't even understand. They don't see it. They don't see it. They can't write it how they because they don't see it. They writing what they understand. They writing what they see. How to get this darn book in you, right? But that's what it is. The Most High God knows those who are his, right? And what's the other seal? Let everyone that names the name of the Messiah depart from iniquity. That's it. So now that's the two sides, right, of our walk. One side is God already know who's his. Ain't none of your business. Stop trying to figure it out, right? Only part you got to do is, this. he tells you, how do you know? Look, God, he tells you one, Yah knows who are his. The other one is, but everybody who names the name departs from iniquity. So he tells you, I already know who, it, who gonna, I, I know, I seen it. I didn't done the thing. That's what God, I didn't done the whole thing. I know how it's going to play out, right? Now, all I need from y'all is to know it's going to play out well for you if you depart from iniquity. That's how you know. You know that you're going to make it when you depart from iniquity. Other than that, for everybody else, ain't none of y'all business. That's it. So the only thing we judge is, as far as I can see, the brothers departed from iniquity. We don't know what he's doing behind closed doors. We don't know if he's lying. We don't know none of that stuff. But don't go searching for that. There ain't none of nobody business. If the man is accused, that's something different. But if you ain't got no reason, why are you trying to? It's a lot of brothers that just hate, just hate like, mm -hmm. yeah, that brother probably, that brother probably. Why? You don't need to. The, he either is or he ain't from your point of view. If somebody else accuse him of something, then that's a different story. You can search it out. You can figure it out. Is that true or is it not? Hey, brother, I heard this about you. Is it true or is it not? That's one thing. But if you and your deep brother don't even be having an accusation about a man, only thing they know is, man, that brother ain't with my camp. He probably, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. When I criticize these brothers, it's because I know you following a camp that don't believe in nothing. Like, listen, I don't play at the, I give you specifics. I'm not about to, I'm not about to sit here and just, well, you don't come to my, my Bible study. So what? They don't mean nothing. When y'all sure, when they was walking around y'all sure, y'all, they came to y'all sure. They was like, man, look, if these brothers out here, they casting out demons in your name. They ain't even with us. Y'all sure told them, well, if they ain't against us, then they for us. <coughs> y'all sure ain't never met them. Don't know what they doing. But if you ain't, ha if you don't have nothing to charge them with, then what are you, why are you, mind your darn business.
it's crazy though, but that's the mindset of just haters. That's what it just people are just hating. Now I be hating on these folk too, but when I hate on them, I got a specific. You know what I'm talking about? You follow an IC, what is it? I U C what is it? I U I C I U I C. If you're a part of I U I C, I don't want to say. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That, 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 no, that don't even make no sense. I forgive the people who just members of IU because you don't know no better. You know what I'm saying? But if you a leader, and I boy, I don't, you better get out of my darn face. Talking about some righteousness. You don't know what you darn talking about. Don't even know the darn book. Baby girl, be careful, please. Go ahead. Go over there. Be careful. Don't hit nothing, please. No, not right there, baby girl. Go in the room and do it. Let's go back to Nam. Let's see what Nam I'm talking about. We all the way over here. Sorry, it's not. This I apologize, y'all, because this is not how I wanted to go through the book. This go around. I don't want to jump around a lot. I just kind of want to go through it. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we gotta, you know what I'm saying? We gotta. Yeah. yeah I just want y'all to see. Like this whole book say the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like Paul can't tell. Listen. <sighs> Paul is never telling you anything because he just came up with it one day. That's how they would like y'all to believe Paul. They would look, they would like, like they would like y'all to believe that Paul just came up with something. Do y'all understand? All the it's ain't it ironic that Paul is probably the most well versed in our law and scripture. Oh, what we consider Old Testament, right? He is the probably the most well versed out of any writer. In our book, from cover to cover, he probably the most well versed out of all of it. And ain't it ironic? All the people who promise and love the law don't understand a lick of what the man talking about. That's why I tell y'all all the time: these people who think they know the law don't know the law. They just don't get it. Let's go back to Nahum. Let's see what Nahum talking about. I mean. It's weird. Wait, somebody from IUCP would come over here and talk to me about some darn law. Boy, if you don't get your butt out of my darn face, what's wrong with y'all? Hey, boy, y'all can't even, you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't, ain't even figured out uh, darn Isaiah 9 yet. Talking to me about no darn law. Why don't you back your butt up? You think they would love Paul because he was a Pharisee and knew the law so well. They, they ignore all that. Them boys skip right over that part. You know what I'm saying? They don't care nothing about this stuff. They, they don't know the law. It don't fit. When they don't know the law and they don't fit, all of a sudden, now nah, Paul, man, Paul speaking of, that's what they be saying. Paul be speaking of his own accord. Or like the brother told me when we went, what what was they? They was, uh, they wasn't, I, they was GOCC, right? Or GO, what was it? They was, was something. I don't even remember. Yeah, I think it was GO, what was it? GOCC? I can't even remember all them things. You know what I'm saying? But I think they were GOC when we, me and T went to the brother and we started talking to him. I forgot what we were talking about, but we started talking to him and we ended up talking about Paul. You know what I'm saying? And we got to him and the brother. Look, we started off the whole conversation. Well, you know, nah, man, we all take the book for what it say. Oh, y'all do too? Yeah, we do too. Yeah. Oh, we all, we all in agreement. With the book say it, it say it. The book right. 100%. Book ain't never wrong. Don't ever contradict. That's how we all started off the conversation. We going back and forth. <laughs> we start lighting it, brother. <laughs> We started lighting it, bro. He thought he was going somewhere, too. He thought he was going to wiggle out some of this stuff. We were like, all right, well, then uh, how you going to deal with this? Then brother and me, me and brother T, boy, that day was like tag team champ, boy. I'm just, I hit him with one, you know what I'm saying? Another T come in, ah, ah, ah. But what about this? And I come back, no, no, no. But what about that? You know what I'm saying? We were like, that brother didn't know what to do. And his little members was in there. You know what I'm saying? Still to this day, a couple of them reach out to me like, yeah, and I remember that day. You know what I'm saying? I know. I know. You know what I'm saying? But he warped them because they ain't even right here. They ain't even here. They know. They recognize. That's what's crazy. They recognize y'all lit the boy up. Y'all brother. Look, they messaged me. It's two of them. They messaged me. Look, man, y'all brothers know what y'all talking about. Man, y'all broke it down and y'all didn't do it. Usually brothers is yelling and screaming and this, that, and other. Y'all didn't do none of that. Maybe a little bit, but y'all didn't really do none of that. This, that, and other. Da, da, da. She is like, y'all really broke that stuff down. I would, at first, I was confused, but the more y'all explained it, I got it. But guess what? She ain't never been here. Never been here. So then you got to ask. God knows who are his. Ain't none of my business. But he knows who are his. That's it. All we got to do is keep moving. But yeah, we had lighting that brother up. At the end of it, that brother was like, well, listen. Paul, Paul, he spoke of his own accord. 
I was like, I thought we just got done talking about the whole book. So the whole book except Paul. So we started lighting them up about that too. But after a while, we was like, this is a waste of time. Just get on up out of here. It don't matter what you show them. They already got their mind made up. Because, well, he's, he's aligned himself. The brother aligned himself. And I like the brother too. I, I, do, I do like the brother. But the brother's aligned himself to something that's not of God. And so then you got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. You got you to you put yourself in to make a choice because it's like, okay, I know, I know this is some foolishness, but my heart is tied up in it. It's my family now. I've committed myself to it. I've done all this stuff. It'll just be like me, man. Somebody, look, the most high God came to me was like, look, shut the whole Bible study down. Stop broadcasting every, that, I'm, I'm committed to this. Like away from, away from what I think my mandate is from God, if the most high God himself came to me, was like, no, shut it down. Stop doing it. I'm telling y'all right now, I would be like, but I really want to, like, I really enjoy this. I would feel like, man, my purpose is gone. What, what am I going to do? You got to give me something to replace this. Give me a man of God that's going to teach us all. And I can sit down and listen. I would love that. Listen, it's my order. Give me a man of God that I can sit and listen to. That teach this thing right. Understand and break down this book. You know what I'm saying? Explain that thing thoroughly. Can speak on all these different levels. If you give me the man of God. Oh, listen, y'all won't ever hear from me again. I want y'all to understand. I want y'all to know that I be looking too. Not no more, really. But I used to look like, let me find. I was online too, looking for like, man, let me see if these brother teaching it right, this, that, and other. You know, not no more. I ain't got tired now. They, they videos too long. My video long too, but they too long. I ain't about sitting here listening to an hour of you going round about and round about and then be wrong at the end. That's crazy to me. I be sitting there like, I spent the whole hour listening to this brother and he dead wrong at the end. And I can't even, he ain't got no number I can ask him and talk to him. I can't even talk to the brother. I'm like, man, I'm not playing with these people online, man. These people are crazy. All right? But that's, you know what I'm saying? That's, 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 that's something that we get, the people who, who position themselves as leader, we get connected to the people and we get connected to the job and we get sometimes connected to the pride that come with it. Cause people tell you, oh, you, you know, the word so well, and oh, you know, you a blessed man of God. We get connected to hearing that stuff. We get to connected to feeling that stuff, being exalted by people. That stuff is a drug. And so most I got come and say, Yo, Phil, shut that whole thing down. Shut it down. Now you got to make a choice. Am I doing it for God or am I doing it for me? And that's what separates the real from the fake. And these boys, when, when the most high God show it to them, you ain't in nothing. These boys make a choice. Well, I don't want to throw down and tear down and pull up and root out everything that I've been doing. I don't want to destroy everything I wouldn't, I've been doing. So now they don't got the foundation of Yahuwah knows who were his and every man who is named by the name departs from iniquity. They don't have that. Going back to Nahum, they don't, you know what I'm saying? Nahum, you know what I'm saying? The most high God knows who trusts in him. They don't have that. They don't have that peace. They don't have that confidence. They just carrying along with a lie, teaching our people lies, stealing the word from us. Right. And at least of more confusion and more confusion. And now the man of God, you know what I'm saying? The most high God raised up all across the world, right? One here in Las Vegas. And then, you know what I'm saying? Or I ain't going to say one. It might be more in Las Vegas, but one that I know of in Las Vegas. You know what I'm saying? And then all the rest. But men of God who come and teach the word to the people. And now that make their job even harder because they got to try to sort through all these tangled lies that y'all y'all believe. While trying to untangle our own. Right? Keep going. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. Mm -hmm. What did he imagine against you? He will make an utter end, uh, utter, an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up in the second, uh, so, shall not rise up the second time. For while they be folded together as thorns, and while they be drunken as drunk, they shall be devoured as stubble, fully dry. There is one, there is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against Yahuwah's wicked counselor. Wait, against Yahuwah, a wicked counselor. Thus says Yahuwah, though they be quiet and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down. When he shall pass through, though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now I will break his yoke from off thee and will burn bonds in sunder. <laughs> He's talking about the king of Assyria. 
He talking about how he gonna break the uh he gonna break he gonna break uh Assyria down because Assyria is still running the show, right? Babylon is getting a little wiggle room now. You remember Babylon came and they took uh they took Manasseh and they they messed with Ammon, right? So they getting a little wiggle room now, but they not in full control. Assyria is still the one that they Assyria still got the whole empire, right? So you see Nico trying to rise, the king of Egypt. Nico was trying to rise. And he is trying to fight too. You see Babylon trying to move and shape. So that's telling you that Assyria's power is not as strong as it used to be. Right? So now Nahum is coming and prophesying the end, the end of Assyria. Right? Keep going. The Lord has given a commandment concerning thee that no more of thy name be sown. Out of the house of thy gods will I cut off the graven image and the molded image. I will make thy grave for thou art vile. Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feast and perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. That's the end of the chapter? Yeah. All right. So we'll end it there with that chapter, and we'll we'll come back next week, and we'll talk a little bit more about Nahum. And probably we'll probably try to finish out Nahum um, in, the, in the prophecy he had against Assyria. Then we'll jump into... Uh, We'll jump into uh, Jeremiah. You know what I'm saying? We'll talk a little bit about Jeremiah. Um, we still need to finish up Micah. And we got a whole lot of Isaiah that we still got to read. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but yeah, we're going to jump into to Jeremiah. And we're going to sprinkle in Isaiah and a little bit of Micah here and there. Micah is not a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of Isaiah for sure. Uh, any questions? Are there any questions based off of what we read or talked about today? You know what I'm saying? After we get done with um or get through a lot of Jeremiah, then we go um we're gonna pick back up into the next king. Cause after Josiah, you know what I'm saying, we got my boy, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh Jeconiah. Jehoahaz, but what's they, uh he had another name. Jeconiah. Was it Jeconiah? Yeah, Jeconiah. Coniah, right? Yeah. Jeconiah for short, but yeah, Jeconiah. Yeah, Jeconiah. You know what I'm saying? So you know, um, yeah, when Jeconiah, you know what I'm saying, or Jehoah has as it's up on the board, it's the same, but you know, it's the same person. But we're gonna get into him because that's the beginning of the end. You know what I mean? That's the beginning of the end there. So it's a whole lot that we're gonna have to talk about. Huh? Jeconiah. It was Jeconiah, then his brother, and then their uncle. Which was Zedekiah was their uncle. Zedekiah was the uncle? He was the uncle of... Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Zedekiah. Zedekiah was yeah. brothers to uh, to uh, Jehoiakim and, uh, and Jeconiah, right? Yeah. That he, was, he was their uncle, I think. He was, no, he was Jehoiakim's uncle. He was, I think he was Jehoiakim's brother. But yeah, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, we'll get into it. I'll get, yeah, we got a refresh too. <laughs> you know yeah, got a refresh. I forgot. You know, I ain't yeah. read this one in a minute. It was three. Yeah, we got a refresh. Like one too. got taken prisoner, so his son, then his son got taken prisoner, so it had to go to the uncle because he didn't have. I don't think he had a son to rule or something like that. Yeah. All right. No questions. Let's go ahead and pray out. <laughs>